my previous video I gave you an example of uh, what I consider to be the most simple basic down to earth guitar practice amp you can possibly get with no frills, no features, um, just literally something to make your guitar sound a little bit louder to amplify it once it's plugged in. So in this, um, this is a step up, I'm going to have a look at um, a higher quality guitar practice amp. This is my own amp that I've been using to do all of my electric guitar recording on this channel and that I use on a day to day basis as my own practice amp. I mentioned in the previous video it's actually, um, it's not it's not available anymore, it's discontinued, it's about 15 years old as this thing so you can't go out and uh, buy a new version of this but um, I did have a quick look, they're available on the second hand market for about 70 or 80 quid. Now hopefully if you can see just by looking at it straight away it's got quite a lot more stuff on it, a lot more knobs and features on it than uh, the previous one. I'm going to have a quick run through um, the the features on this amp and then um, I'm going to follow that up with a bit of a playthrough and demonstrate some of the stuff that it can do and hopefully you'll be able to see for yourselves why it's worth getting something that's a little bit um, a little bit more flexible and a little bit uh, more fully featured than the most basic thing. It might look a bit complicated on the first appearance but uh, hopefully by the time I've gone through it I'll be able to uh, demystify some of the um, some of the stuff on it. So we we'll start off on the, um, the right hand side of the amp, we've got what's pretty much self explanatory here which is your, your power switch and a little, uh, a little light that indicates when the amplifier is switched on, it's not on at the minute, hence the light's not lit up. I'm going to quickly move just next to that, we've got a knob here that's, uh, that's called master and that's the main volume control for the amplifier so no matter what else you do on the, the rest of the controls on the amplifier, this thing here is going to determine how loud your amplifier is. So it's a good idea for, uh, it's a good technique when you start off um, switch the amp on and that, maybe switch that right down so it's at its lowest level. There'll be nothing coming out the speaker at its lowest level so you can comfortably plug your guitar in without any nasty noises and it's not going to be too loud for you. Then you can always just wind that up until you get to the level that's satisfactory for you. I've just left it on 12 o'clock here. When I'm when I've been practicing and when I've been doing these videos it's nowhere near that level. This amplifier is 15 watt amplifier normally it's way down here for practice in the house purposes you, you don't need that much power at all. The rest of the stuff in this section we're just going to ignore for now and also these little buttons down on the bottom here we're just going to ignore these for now. I'm going to talk about them later but I want to um, I want to really concentrate on the, the important things of the amp before getting into the other features. So on the other side, if we look at the left hand side, you've got, you can see a socket there, that's your guitar input, that's where you're going to plug into no matter what type of guitar you've got. That's fairly simple just like the power switch. Now where this amp mainly differs from the previous one is the variety of different sounds and tones you can get. And that's where this particular knob here comes in. It says style on it. Um, if you can see on the video we've got loads of different options on this, we can turn it from fully that direction counterclockwise to the other direction clockwise. What we're doing there basically is this amp's got built into it, you can choose um, different voicings for all kinds of different types of amplifiers. So if I go back to, to that position I've got, um, it's called clean on the, on the legend there and that's going to give me the cleanest possible sound it's going to be very close to an acoustic guitar sound or even the, the sound of the previous amplifier that I used that's just a, something to make your guitar louder it's not going to do anything else other than make it louder so that's great if you want a, a clean sound to play your chords through cleanly something on uh, acoustic guitar style, that type of sound but in addition to that I've also got all these other options as well going through them, I've got a couple of different options for clean there moving on, you can see moving the knob around I've got some choices for different blue sounds there what that means basically is it's going to give us a little bit of overdrive, a little bit of break up on the sound, a little bit of crunchiness not too much, it's not going to be heavy metal or anything like that but it's just going to give us a little bit of bite to the sound and the further we move this dial round the more of that 
crunchiness, that bite, that distortion. We're going to get, we move from blues to crunch. Got a couple of options for the crunch channels. Then high gain, that's when we start getting into the, the rock and metal sort of sounds. There's a few options for high gain and, and, and finally drive. That's, that's flat out distortion, as much, um, as much distortion and muck as what the amp can manage. So you've got all those different choices. You plug your guitar into there. You can mess around with that knob, choose whichever different style of sound. These are loosely based upon different classic amplifiers that have been previously produced. But it's a really, um, it's a really simple, useful way of being able to emulate lots of different types of sounds within a simple amplifier. Now, these sounds available on this practice amplifier here using this knob to start off with they don't sound as good as the more expensive top end amplifiers that they're trying to copy but bear in mind those things cost thousands of pounds this thing you can pick up if you're lucky second hand there's not that many of them about 70 or 80 quid or thereabouts so for the actual value for money aspect in my opinion the quality of these sounds is absolutely is absolutely spot on not just on this particular amplifier this is a Vox DA15 there's loads of others like it of a similar sort of nature in my next video I'm going to look at a new one that's currently available that's similar so um, you know there's an option there for you to be able to just go out and order but value for money wise if this is sort of market the sort of price that you're looking at these sounds are perfectly usable so moving on from that style now whichever setting we've got that style on it doesn't matter any of those we come to our next two knobs now I mentioned the two knobs because we use these together they work together on uh, on this amplifier and you'll find that that's the case on a lot of amplifiers pretty much most of them as well we've got one called gain and one called volume now the reason they work together is because between them they give us uh, an element of control about how much distortion, how much breakup we've got on the sound. So even though I've got the choice on this first style knob of choosing the basic type of sound I want, so let's say a clean sound, I've got it set perfectly to clean. If I want to make as clean a sound as possible with these next two knobs, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce my gain right down and put my volume right up and then I'll slowly increase my gain until I get to start with a sound that's coming out that I can hear through the amplifier if it's completely off I'll get nothing but then I'll just wind that up until I get a sound that I'm happy with so the amount of gain that I've got that dictates how dirty my sound is the more I turn that up the more gritty, dirty, distorted sound I've got and I balance these two knobs together. On the other end of the scale, if I'm going for my drive, my flat out heavy metal, I'll want loads of gain on there. So I'll turn my gain up and I'll use my volume. I'll start off again down in a low position and I'll bring that up until I get a nice level that I'm happy with. Obviously you want to play with these until you get the sort of sound you want. But the golden rule is with the gain and the volume, the more gain you have, the more distortion you're going to have, the less gain you have, the cleaner your sound's going to be. And that's the same for all amplifiers. Moving on from there, we've got something I mentioned in the previous video. We've got the equalisation section. The previous one uh, was a bass amp, so it's a little bit more uh, quirky than this. This one's straightforward. We've got treble, middle and bass. What this does, completely independent of everything else, it lets you adjust the, um, the relative levels of the different frequencies of your sound. So if I turn the treble up, it's going to make the high frequencies on the guitar stand out more. If I turn it down, it's going to cut them back a little bit and make them not as prominent. It's really useful sometimes on the electric guitar, particularly if playing lead guitar, your, your treble frequencies can be a little bit ear piercing and a little bit harsh so it's quite useful just to be able to back that off if you want to do just to make the sound a little bit more pleasant to you the middle your mid-range on a, on a normal guitar amp 
when you the best way I can explain it without playing it is it gives you um, a full bodied sort of sound when you're playing your chords just your average sort of middle of the frequency sort of chords you turn that up it'll make them punch out a little bit more you back that off it's a technique sometimes they call certainly in metal and rock they call it scooping which gives it a more aggressive sound but sometimes it um, your mid-range of chords can struggle to cut through unless you've got it set up just so again with your bass that affects the volume of your low frequency sounds so that the you know your low string your E string on your guitar and, and the things down there if that's too high you will find that um, your sound gets a little bit muddy and some of your notes can get a little bit lost so it's nice to be able to just balance that and be able to get uh, a nice tone. I've just put these just for the sake of argument because I'm not playing it, they're all up at 12 o'clock now. When you play for yourself through your own amp, you just want to have a mess around with these. There's no golden rule to it, the only golden rule is if it sounds right, then it is right. So just do it by ear and uh, have a play with those. You can also sometimes find if you're trying to emulate the sound of a particular guitarist, if you have a look online or if you, you know, maybe see it in a book, You'll be able to find the settings or the approximate settings for all of these things, gain, volume, treble, middle, bass, that that guitar player is actually using to create that sound. And that'll give you a starting point to be able to more accurately get close to what they sound like if that's what you want to do. If you don't want to do that, if you're looking to make your own unique sound, then just experiment with them until you're content and you can, uh, you can make your sound to suit yourself. Now these are the main features of the amplifier this is what's going to give you your guitar sound and that's why I've talked about them first the other things that we've got on this amplifier and that's why it's really great and such good value for money moving on we've got this other knob here called effects as well as the actual guitar sound I've got a lot of different effects that I can apply to my sound on here now, I've said before I'm going to do a, a completely separate video on effects because there's so much to cover but on, on this amp and lots of others like it I've got such a good range of things a lot of the common effects well reverb that's one that's a classic guitar effect that gives you sort of an echoey sound as if you're playing in a bigger room or a hall we've got things like delay that'll give you an echo as though you're playing in a cave when you you shout into a cave and your voice comes back at you echo 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 and loads of others as well there's one called a chorus which gives you a, a thicker sort of sound, almost as if you've got two guitars playing together. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll cover effects in another video, but just the fact that we've got the ability to have these effects on here to add to our sound, the, the, the initial sound that we're making, gives us so much more flexibility to be able to recreate other sounds and also just make up our own sounds and inspire ourselves. Sticking with the the effects section what we do is select the effects choice that we want here we've also got a little button there called tap now what that does is let's say for example the uh, the delay effect which i said is like shouting into a cave when you shout into a cave the the sound that comes back the echo that comes back depends on the size of the cave the tap if i tap on that it lets me choose when my delay happens so for example if I was to shout into a cave and at this tempo I'd be hearing shout, 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 shout. If I was to tap it faster and set it faster it would be like shout, 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 shout. Makes a lot more sense when you can hear it in person but it's nice to be able to have that adjustability on the effect. Again, got another little knob here, another little button. Those are similar to this in, insofar as they give us control over these effects. So perhaps how loud they are in relation to our standard guitar sound and how deep they are again in relation to our standard sound. Not worry too much about that for now but it's just great to be able to have these things built into the amplifier. Really handy here, I've got a bypass button so when I'm playing around with my sounds all these effects I can just all of a sudden switch them on or off so I can have a completely what we call a dry sound with no effects just my guitar and then I can switch 
whatever effects I want to use I can switch those on and off at the touch of a button that's really really useful to finish off with I said I'm going to leave it till uh, the end these extra little buttons down here this is something that um, you might not find in every amplifier but you'll find it on a lot of them and I found it super useful is we've got the ability to use what we call presets so if I'm messing around with all these different knobs and setting them however I want them to be and I find a sound that I really love what would be really great is if I had a way to save that sound and that's what a preset does for us now here we've got a button called manual if I was to have it in what we call manual mode press that button wherever these knobs are however it's set that's what I'll hear through my amplifier I've also got a button called preset which enables me to recall another sound that I've previously saved so let's say for example I like this sound how it's set at the minute I can press this button here called right I think I've not written one for a while but I think I would have either pressed it twice or hold it in and that will save that sound for me so that whenever I go into preset mode that sound comes back without me having to find it again on these knobs in the old days what I used to have to do was either remember where your knobs were to be able to get the sound back again or if you couldn't remember or if you wanted to use a lot of different sounds then you could write them down and draw a little diagram so you know well, that's there that's there you can take a picture of your phone of where they are and then you'd be able to recall your sound using this preset function I can just recall it at the touch of a button and my sound comes straight back to me I've actually got two presets on this amplifier some of the, the bigger, more expensive amplifiers have got loads and loads of presets on. This one's got two, which is really useful. So, so once I've decided I'm playing in preset mode, I can actually have two different, channel one, channel two, switch between them there. So I can save two different sounds from my settings on here and recall them at any time. I find that super useful for what I'm doing because I can have one that's based on a a very clean sound which you'll have heard on my videos and I can have another one that's based on a distorted sound which you also will have heard on my videos and just by pressing that button there I can recall either of those two sounds at the touch of a button and then if I want to play with the amp and just mess around with it I can go into manual mode and just mess around with the knobs as usual so for the money as I say we're talking 70 or 80 quid for an amplifier like this on the second hand market it just gives you so much more flexibility than the uh, the previous amplifier that I mentioned. That's all of the um, the features on the what we call the main the main panel of the amp. On this amplifier, they're actually on top of the amp. On some of them, you'll find them on the front panel there. But on this one, they're actually on top. With a small amp like that, it's quite handy to have them on top because you tend to look down on it and you can see them easily. There's a couple more things on the back. I'm not going to go into big detail on it, but what you've got is a uh, You've got a socket for putting your um, your power lead in, your mains power lead. You've also got um, a, a useful headphone socket again. I mentioned that in a previous video. Headphone socket's always useful. And uh, on this amp as well, which is great, you've got an input socket for a foot switch. So you can go and buy a, a standard foot switch from, uh, from a music shop. Probably cost you, I don't know, uh, 10 quid, 20 quid or something like that. Like a little foot pedal. And I can switch between those two different saved sounds I've got so if I'm playing a song that's got uh, two different sounds in it and whilst I'm playing obviously my hands aren't free to be able to press the buttons or change the amplifier I can use a little foot switch that'll switch between those two channels for me so for, mo for the value for money a little amplifier like this is absolutely fantastic and I'm totally happy with the sound on it I will um, I'll do another video and um, explain or demonstrate actually some of the sounds so that you can hear them but um, I, I, this is just an explanation of the features and the functions of this amplifier.